Okay. So thank you so much for joining. Um, what I want to do to begin as we have a, perhaps a few more people trickle in is to actually just begin with a quick little poll to get, get a sense of where you guys are with using um, gradebooks. So today's webinar is on setting up your gradebook specifically within Blazeview, which is our learning management system. Um, the start of the workshop, we're gonna talk a little bit about um, sort of pedagogical um, areas of interest uh, surrounding using gradebooks and, and what kind of assessments you want to have in your gradebook. Um, but the, the lion's share of what we're going to do today, especially as we approach the, the start of term, is actually the nuts and bolts of what, how to exactly set up your gradebook, how to link different items to your gradebook, um, and the difference between, you know, like a point space versus a weighted gradebook. So, Specifically, what I'd like to do right now um, is take a quick poll um, about whether you prefer coming into this webinar using a weighted gradebook, which is um, a gradebook where all of your grade items are organized in categories, uh, and then those categories add up to a specific percentage of the final grade. So all of the different categories then add up to 100%, which is the total amount of um, uh, your total possible points um, in a grade. Uh, and a points-based is where each specific assignment has a specific number of points, and that adds up to the total number of points for the whole class. So what I'd like you to do um, right at the beginning is to actually just type in your name, which you can do right on the slide in, in Blackboard Collaborate Ultra. If you look on um, your browser window towards the top of the Collaborate Ultra, there's going to be like the letter T that's surrounded by like four lines with little circles in the corners, um, and that um, button actually lets you create a text box right on the screen. So if, you, if you'd if you be so kind as to let me know whether you prefer weighted or points based by just typing your name onto one side of the screen, um, that would be perfect. And thank you to, I think it was Anita who just joined us, welcome. Um, so very quickly, we're just taking a quick poll um, using the text box feature on Blackboard Collaborate Ultra to let me know whether you coming into this generally use a weighted or a points based gradebook system. And I know, um, some of you perhaps are, are new um, teachers, and so if not, you can maybe straddle the line down the middle. <laughs> but I do want to see, hopefully, a bunch of names popping up. Lovely. So already we've got some on both sides. Brian, my screen says the content didn't load. Do I need to use uh, that browser refresher? What browser are you using? Um, I want to say maybe I'm in Chrome. Chrome should be good. So that's interesting. Is anybody else having the? Uh, it looks like other people are are in here. Okay, perhaps I live in the loading. country, so <laughs> my internet is probably acting up. I'm gonna hit the refresher browser and okay. see if that helps. Well, it looks like everybody else is actually already. Yes. Um, okay. I can see yeah, that. actually, you can see it. Yes, I had to hit refresh, but I wasn't seeing any okay. of what you were saying, and I thought maybe I was losing my mind for a minute. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I can actually check. Uh, it says on my um, Blackboard gives me sort of schematics of your upload and download speeds, so I can see if people are able to do things. And yours just went from red to green, so hopefully we can keep you that way. Uh, yes. uh, so, okay, so Kiki was the tiebreaker here. We did end up with four in the weighted group uh, versus three in point space, but a nice, uh, interesting spread or a nice even spread here. Um, let me just open it up. If anybody wants to volunteer, uh, if they have a strong opinion or even a weak opinion about why they ended up in one of the different categories, I'd love to hear why, because I think there's good reasons for both. Nobody has a strong opinion one way or another. Well, I, I'm in the nursing department. This is Kiki speaking. So um, they have to reach a certain amount of points, you know, weight it before they can actually, you know, add it up. So different things amount to different uh, score points based on the total 100 points for the class. As far as the HESI test, the exams and quizzes and those types of things. 
Okay, so it's specific to your sort of discipline yes. where it just sort of makes the most sense to use, have these different categories that have specific weights. Yes. Yes, Anita, go ahead. Uh, so um, I use it, uh, I actually use both, but I like weighted because I have a lot of smaller formative things and that gives me, um, a, I can kind of uh, ju juggle between that. But then I can also use points that way too by just having more points or less. But um, so I'm, I'm probably one of those in the middle. Okay, fair enough. Can I ask you really quickly, what kind of formative assessments do you use a lot of? Uh, it's just their engagement in it, and so they it's sort of a participation thing, but they have to have content uh, that they're developing. So it's more of a, a growth process for those. Okay, super. Yeah, because I can actually see having a lot of formative assessments making you go into one of either categories, depending on whether they tend to be um, the, the same weight or not. Um, but we, we'll, we'll come back to that. I want to see, would anybody from the points based like to share why they prefer the points based system? Sure, Brian, I will. Um, I think that it's easier for the students to understand where they're at or and what the expectations are. And if your points add up to 100, it's kind of the same as being weighted, it's just listed as points. So like if something's worth 20 points, out of 100, that's 20% of your grade. It just um, is easier for me to understand than uh, I think the students. That's just my opinion. Super, thank you. Yeah, um, we're gonna talk about, I, I love this, excellent answers. And, and I want to preface sort of this webinar by saying that there isn't a right choice. Um, I'm going to be in the demonstration, we're gonna set up a weighted grade book the reason I chose that is it's because it's what I used to use predominantly when I was teaching, um, um, but also because I think the points base is kind, kind of has that intuition around exactly how to set it up and perhaps a weighted becomes more intimidating. And so people tend to default to points based overweighted. Uh, and so for that reason, the demonstration today will be weighted. But depending on your circumstances, depending on how you're sort of developing your different kinds of assessments, um, I can see both and there's, uh, what I love about what you said there, Kate, was thinking about um, the interpretation of grades. And that's going to be a big part of what we're talking about today. So I suppose now that we've gotten through this opening, um, this opening query, I should introduce myself for those of you who don't know. Uh, my name is Brian Fitzgerald. I work with the Center for Excellence in Learning and Teaching and the Center for E-Learning as a training specialist here at Valdosta State. Uh, I've been here a little over a year now, um, and I've done this workshop a couple of times. Um, so hopefully we've ironed out some of the kinks. Um, and, I'm, and I like doing it, and I like to do it right at the start of the term because I think it's uh, it's one of the really helpful things I can do uh, as people are, are finishing up uh, their course pages and, and starting the term. So what we're going to cover today um, is specifically we're going to talk about um, the benefits, evidence-based benefits to learning and teaching just by having a grade book, whether it's points-based or weighted um, in your learning management system so students can keep track of their scores as the semester progresses. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about formative and summative assessments and their effects on student learning. We're going to distinguish the different types of grade books available in Blazeview. We've already started that by uh, querying um, about um, weighted versus points-based systems. We're going to create a weighted Blazeview Blaze View gradebook. Um, you can follow along and do points based if you want, um, but I'll be doing weighted during the demonstration portion. Uh, and then we're going to, at the very end, we're going to link different things from our Blazeview page, so uh, assignments and quizzes and different things like that to the gradebook so that it automatically populates once you uh, grade certain items. So that's what we have in store for today. But I want to start by actually just talking about why it is we even want half a gradebook set up. Um, and the, the number one reason that I always like to lead out with how it benefits you as instructors um, is that first and foremost, you're going to get a lot fewer questions from your students about the assignments and the course in general, right? Um, you're going to get better student work and we'll come back to that in just a second. And specifically at the end of the term, when you're busy grading a bunch of midterms, um, you or you know, finals at the end of the term, you'll have less work because you're not then trying to sort of sort out all the grades for the entire term. So 
keeping up with it as you move through um, is, is a great approach there. But the reason that you actually get better student work uh, has to do with the benefits for students. And specifically, it leads to self-regulated learning. So when students have the ability to see how they're doing in a class by measuring um, their scores uh, on different assignments, right? So in theory, the way that this works is the students have an idea for what they have to do, their strategies for being successful in your course, and you can help them by telling them these are some good strategies for being successful in this course, having to do with good study habits and whatnot. Um, then they should use those strategies and then monitor their performance. Right? and then reflect on their performance and then use that reflection to then guide changes in their sort of strategies moving forward. So what that means and what's required for that to work is that you actually have to have this sort of feedback. You need to be able to go into a gradebook and look to see how you're doing on things, right? But that only works if you actually have um, something in the gradebook to, to, to feedback on and that leads us to start it starting to think about including formative assessments in our work. So let's go ahead and jump into looking at that. Um, so on this next slide, we're going to have you guys use that feature that you've already uh, used, the text box. And I want you to just think about some different types of assessments. So um, formative assessments refer to tools that are used throughout a course um, that identify misconceptions, struggles, and learning gaps. Um, and assessing ways to close those gaps. So formative assessments help students take ownership of their learning uh, when they understand the goals are about improving learning, not necessarily raising their final grades. Uh, so formative assessments should be low stakes, but frequent. Whereas summative assessments uh, include, they're the way that we evaluate student learning. So student learning, their knowledge and their proficiency or their success at the conclusion of a unit or of the course. Um, some of assessments are almost always formally graded and often, though not necessarily, uh, reflect a, a heavy proportion of the grade total. So what you see on screen right now is these two different uh, columns that I've started by listing one example of a formative or a summative assessment. Uh, what I'd like you to do right now is to just throw out some other examples, if you'd be so kind, uh, using the text box feature on Collaborate. Um, fill in some remaining dots um, for each of the categories by su suggesting appropriate assessments. And I'm going to use this next minute to actually mark attendance to see who all is here while you guys are filling that in. All right, so it looks like we've got some things starting here. Uh, in terms of formative assessments, I'm seeing things like engagement in the class. That's great. Um, review questions at the end of class. Um, certainly, that can be a, a possibility. Self-learning modules where people are working through kind of on their own. Um, for summative assessments, presentations, like big scale presentations that they've been working on definitely counts. I'm going to be honest, I don't actually know what checkoffs are. Um, so if it, whoever put checkoffs, would you mind explaining what that is? Um, in nursing, like the simulation lab, after they've learned content and went through 
and done all that, they have to be able to demonstrate that they can do the skill successfully. Okay. So I think it will fall over there under the summative. It may be under formative. I'm not sure, but I put it over there because it's less weighted. You know, they have to get a certain. They have to have between the quiz, the exams. They have to have 74% before all that other stuff can be counted into that 100% total for the classes. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've worked with a few nursing faculty before, and I, I've seen kind of the way, like, the there's, like, a lot of, like, outside checking and making sure, and I, and I get why, because it's, like, you want to make sure that people are really coming through uh, clear. And so, um, checkoffs, I can see it both. It sort of depends, right? If yeah. it's sort uh, if it's something where you do kind of, like, weekly, where it's just, like, okay, let's make sure that you're on pace and you're keeping up with things, you might think of it more as, like, a formative assessment. But if it's like at the end of maybe a module in the course, like yes, a, a it's module, it's, module. Yes, yes, it's after they've demonstrated, you know, we've we've learned this content, we've taught it, you guys have practiced it. So I need to make sure that you can successfully, you know, move forward to the next skill set that you need to be a nurse, if that makes sense. Got it. Yeah, then that's definitely a summative assessment, right? Because what you're trying to do at that point is um, make sure that um they, they've got proficiency in the material yeah. before moving forward yeah anita go ahead so uh because you said uh, checkoffs in nursing and education we have similar situations so that's why i put in here rubric content it's okay. basically they have a certain level that they have to attain in order to pass that assessment for licensure I'm glad that you, you actually brought that up because I, I was wondering about that one as well. Um, but it sounds like it's the same kind of a thing where if it, especially when there's like an outside agency and, and licensing or um, some kind of third party that needs to have like something coming in to check to make sure that they've left, reached a certain level of proficiency, um, then certainly that would fall into the summative category. So um, correct on both accords there. Uh, and there's lots of lots of good examples here. I want to pull up some that I had myself. Uh, so things like um, discussions in class, which I think sort of goes along with engagement, um, clicker questions, weekly sort of quizzes or one minute reflection papers, little bits of homework assignments, different things like that, that are meant to just kind of check in and make sure people are remain engaged uh, and give both you and the students an opportunity to make sure that they're on track, right? Where summative assessments are tend to anything that you can put the word final in is going to um, going to tend to fall into the summative category. So final projects, big cumulative essays that they've been working on throughout the whole um, semester, presentations, reports, etc. Right. So this is the formative and summative assessments. But one of the things that I wanted to, one of the reasons that I like to talk about formative and summative assessments is because I think that they're both important. Um, and the way that I like to describe it is I think about formative assessments as like the means, right? So this is the way that students can engage in that kind of self-regulated learning. They need that feedback. They need to know if they're on the right track or if they need to adjust how much time they're allocating to um, your class or something like that. Um, but the summative assessments tend to be like the motivation, right? So um, that's going to be the thing that motivates them, like is, the, is they know that they're great, right? Like, passing the class and making sure that they get their certifications or, or um, whatever it is in your class, the summative assessments are what really push them to, to get the work done. So you do tend to want to have both and you need both um, uh, to have sort of like successful approaches with your class. Okay, so now I want to turn to thinking about different kinds of grade books. Uh, and we'll start with a points-based grade book. So, if you look at a points-based gradebook, I've got like kind of an example here on the screen. And one of the things, and this gets back to what uh, Kit was talking about uh, at the very beginning, is that I think it's important to, if you're going to use a points-based gradebook, to facilitate interpretation of your overall grade by making the class out of some round number, right? So something like 100 or 1,000 points, where it becomes easy to know that, uh, okay, I have got 85 points, that's an 85%, right? Um, one of the things that that frustrates me, because this is the main perk of using a points-based gradebook, um, is that it becomes very easy to see how all of the assignments contribute to the final score. 
so when you have a point space grade book and it's out of like 659 points or something random like that, which I have seen, believe it or not, I'm always like, well, that you're defeating the purpose of having a point space grade book, which is that it makes it easy to see where you stand overall in the whole class. Um, in an ideal world, you'd also try to make your assignments out of nice round numbers too, because then it makes it easier to figure out how you're doing on individual assignments along the way. Um, but that's not always possible, especially when you're doing it out of 100 points. Sometimes you need to do something out of nine points because you only have so many points um, to distribute. And so it becomes, a, you know, you can't, I, I get that you can't do that all the time, but as much as possible, it's nice to do that. And what's really good about points based gradebook is it does give you that there's there's a uh, intuitiveness around it right it's like there's so many points that you can earn and each assignment has a certain number of points allocated to it and then you sum up all the points and you divide it by the total number that are possible and you get your final grade that way it sort of feels very logical both for an instructor um, and for the students so why might you use a weighted gradebook um, and there's a couple of reasons why. The first, uh, and this is the reason I included that wacky, waving, inflatable, flailing arm tube man, is that it can be more flexible. And what I mean by flexible is if you need to make changes kind of on the fly during the term, you can. So I'll give you an example. Let's say that you had planned um, for quizzes to, to be 20% of your final grade, uh, and there are going to be 10 quizzes eat, uh, scattered throughout the semester. Now it gets to like the last week of school and you get really sick and have to cancel class for whatever reason. Um, all of a sudden, now you only have nine quizzes instead of the 10 that you had originally planned. So what ends up happening is you drop a, you, you have a couple of options there. You can just give everyone 100% on the quiz, right? And keep things normal. Or you can drop the quiz and only have nine quizzes now during the term. But if you were using a points-based gradebook and each of your quizzes was 10 points, for example, instead of that being now 100 of your 1,000 points, it might be 90. And now your total grade book, instead of being out of 1,000 points, is now out of 990. And one of the main perks of using a points-based gradebook, you've now lost because your points don't add up to a nice round number that makes it easy for students to interpret their overall grade. And so a weighted gradebook actually resolves this problem because what it does is it says well however many quizzes there are we'll just alloc we'll just distribute that 20 percent that we had planned to do for quizzes uh across that many so if instead of doing 10 quizzes where you take 20 percent and divide it by 10 and get two percent for each quiz and you only do nine well now we can just do what like 11 percent i think it will get you to about 100 percent of that category so um so you just, it, it just reallocate, it just distributes the weight based on how many quizzes end up there. And this can go the exact opposite direction, right? Like let's say you put a caveat in your syllabus that says, uh, you know, we have 10 for sure quizzes during the year, but I uh, reserve the right to add a quiz if I, you know, if, if I, the discussions aren't going well or people don't seem to be reading. Uh, and then if that happens and you want to add a pop quiz at some point in the class, you can add a quiz without it totally skewing or messing up the sort of points that you have planned for. Um, and that's kind of what I mean by flexible is you can kind of on the fly change the number of quizzes that you or assignments or whatever it is um, during the course of the academic year without it sort of having devastating effects on the overall composition of your gradebook. The other, I think, main perk of a weighted gradebook is that where a points-based gradebook made it easy to see how all of your assignments fit into the whole of your, your grade for the class, each individual score in a weighted gradebook becomes easy to interpret. And the reason is because you're no longer uh, handicapped by how many um, points you can, you can allocate to in the individual assignment. Um, or assessment in your gradebook. So you can make everything out of 100 points, which means that for each individual assignment, it becomes very easy for students to interpret that particular grade, right? So let's say that you have, um, you have a big paper in your class and one part of it is going to be um, their literature review, right? So you've got to scaffold it all out uh, so that they're going to do it in bits and pieces throughout the term. Uh, and each sort of bit and piece has its own sort of weight. Um, that 
literature review is going to be end up being maybe 4% of the total final grade. But instead of it having like a weird points value, right, like four points or 40 points, um, depending on how you're doing it, you can make it out of 100 points. Um, and then that just automatically gets, uh, gives you the percentage of that weight at the end. I hope that makes sense. Um, if not, please, you can in interrupt me and I'll um, try to explain it a little bit more clear. But because the points don't necessarily um, get, like they don't translate directly one to one into your final um, grade score, like it does with a points, points based grade book, you can make each individual assignment out of 100 points, which makes interpreting individual assignment scores easier. So I'm going to pause there. Um, what I, yeah, let me pause there. If you if that didn't make sense, go ahead and interject now, and I'll take a quick sip of water. Okay. Um, hopefully, hopefully that all uh, was clear. I want to highlight what I put here, which is not ideal, next to the 50 points um, in the quizzes category. And the reason that I said that that's not ideal um, on this slide is because there's no need for that. You can make them both out of 100 points, which facilitates interpretation, right? Um, now, in the assignments category, it's a little bit different um, from this slide here. Assignment one is 50 points and assignment two is 100 points. And you might, for example, have different items from a category that you want not to weight equally. So one of the things that's really helpful about a weighted grade book is if you have like a, a class where you have a bunch of formative assessments that are all weighted the same. So if you if you want quizzes to be 20% of your, your class grade and you're gonna offer 10 quizzes, but they're all weighted the same within that category, a weighted grade book is, is perfect. Um, if you want to have a bunch of different assignments that are all weighted differently, it can get a little bit messy. Um, there is a way to do it, especially if you just have like two, right? Like let's say you have um, your exams, instead of making a category of exams where the midterm is worth 50 points and the final is worth 100 points, um, you can just treat those as separate category. You can put individual line items in the great book. So I'll explain that more once we're into the, the video demonstration, but just know that there are situations where if you don't want things within a certain category to be weighted exactly the same, um, there are ways to do it with, within a weighted grade book, but it might be a situation where a points-based grade book turns out to be a better approach for you. So we're about ready to turn to the demonstration portion of, um, of this webinar, but I do want to pause for just a minute if anybody has questions about anything that we've covered so far, uh, formative or summative assessments or weighted or um, points-based grade books. Okay, well, let me go ahead and stop sharing this so we can start sharing um, my web browser. At any point, if you do have a question, you can type it in chat or you can raise your hand or you could just unmute yourself um, and go ahead and ask your question. I'd be happy to see it, uh, respond as best I can. So let's turn to, I believe this is the right window. Yes, okay, so I've got my sandbox open. If you have a sandbox that you want to follow along with, I would encourage you to go ahead and open that too. Uh, what we're going to be doing is walking through um, the setup wizard for the gradebook, um, and then we'll associate some different items within the gradebook that way. So the first thing that I want to do um, is go into the assessments tab and go to the grades um, button within the drop down menu that appears once you click on the assessments tab. Now, what you can see up at the top is we've got these four different uh, tabs that appear right below that main navigation bar. And the one all the way on the right is called Setup Wizard. So we're going to do Setup Wizard here and get started that way. Now, the Setup Wizard is like a seven step process that gets you essentially. Uh, the core of your gradebook set up, and then you would just end up going in and adding categories and different items afterwards. Most of what we're going to do in the setup wizard is actually a lot of leaving the defaults, but if you have a special circumstance where you want to do something else, um, that's going to be, you'll then know how to go in and, and change that, right? So that's why I like to walk through it. So what we're going to do, first of all, is switch to a weighted gradebook. 
that's step one. And now we get to step two, and this is kind of the other big decision that you have to make here, which is whether you want to do calculated final grade and adjusted final grade and automatically release final grade. So calculate, you have to choose between either calculated final grade or adjusted final grade. And here's what the, here's the difference. The calculated final grade takes everything that you had planned in your grade book and says, that's going to be your final grade, no exceptions. Uh, if you want to modify a student's grade for whatever reason, maybe you want to curve the whole class up a, a point or two, or somebody was at like an 89.5 and you wanted to just show 90 because you're, ha you're happy with that, you want to do adjusted final grade. That allows you to just modify the final grade without going in and regrading individual assignments. If you want to modify a student's uh, final grade within calculated final grade, you have to change their scores in an actual assignment. So um, what I tell people is actually to just leave it at, um, uh, at calculated final grade. Yes, Kiki. So within um, assessments, you go to grades, and then you'll have these four tabs here. If you click Setup Wizard, and then Start. You see the Start button down at the bottom? This is just going to take you through a process. Okay. And the okay. very first step is to just switch to Weighted. So now we're, we're, we're setting it up to, to do a weighted gradebook. Um, so like I said, calculated final grade, it's just whatever you put in the gradebook, that's what they're going to see as their final grade. Adjusted final grade allows you to, for example, curve something towards the end. So what I tell people is just leave it at calculated. This is like a good default. Um, and then if you need to, for whatever reason, at the end of the term, um, curve the class or, or maybe you discovered that um, you're you had a couple of questions or maybe you had a question in one of your quizzes where the answer was marked um the correct answer was marked wrong you just want to give everyone a point you can go into adjusted final grade uh you can switch it to adjusted final grade later um and then go in and make that adjustment at the end so but usually at the start of the term i say just leave it at calculated final grade uh especially if you have a lot of students because it automatically calculates things for you and you don't have to go in and, and manually type in everyone's grade um and then I like to also set automatically release final grades. Um, the reason I do this is because it, when from the student view, when they're looking at their grades, um, it shows them like the clip. So if you don't have, if the, the final grade, uh, their calculated final grade isn't released, they'll see individual grade items for everything, um, but it won't sort of do the math and sum it out for them just to show them where they're at. And that's really helpful for students um, when they're thinking about how they're doing in your class and whether potentially they need to either drop or use one of their withdrawals or uh, come see you in office hours or different things like that. So it's just more information for students. So I think it's, it's a good idea to have it set up that way. Is the final grade final final? Uh, so your, the final grade is final final once you put it into banner. Um, so this is just the final grade in, um, Oh, okay. So is the final grade final point or accumulated grade up to that point? It's going to be the accumulated grade up to that point, but that actually is a really great question because the next step, I think it's the next step, is has to do with dropping or uh, ungraded items or treating ungraded items as zero. So if you have ungraded items treated as zero marked here, what will happen is, um, and you have it, you have it set up to where it shows the final grade to students they'll get something that says like, you're at 17% for this class when it's early in the term, right? And maybe only 20% of the material has been graded. Um, and so basically what that does is it takes everything that's in the gradebook that hasn't been graded yet, including assignments that are, haven't been due yet, and it marks them all as zero. Now, I've, I don't usually recommend treating ungraded items as zero because uh, I think that that causes confusion and it's better to show students where they're at at that given point. So let's say uh, all that's come in is, is one assignment worth 10% of the grade. If they got 100% on that assignment, I want the student to see 100% when they look at their uh, final grade, right? Like when they open up the grade book and they look at the grades, it should say they're at 100% for the class. Um, so that's my preference. I think that that's the most intuitive for the student. You're at 100% based on the work that's been graded so far. Um, if you have treat ungraded items as zero, they'll it'll show that as 10% because they've gotten 100% on the 10% that's been graded so far. Um, I know some faculty who like this because then it feels like 
you're working your way up, you're counting points all the way to the end of the semester and it feels like you're earning it rather than the professor giving you a grade. I can wrap my head around that a little bit, um, but I tend to think that dropping ungraded items and showing them where they currently stand based on what's currently been graded um, is, the, is a good approach for that. So um, if you have drop ungraded items, the final grade that they see in the grade book to answer your question um, is the accumulated grade up to that point for things that have been graded, right? The thing about dropping ungraded items is then if somebody doesn't submit something, you have to go in and manually put the zeros in. Otherwise, it won't, um, it'll just it'll just drop that item from the grade book, right? So uh, that's kind of the downside to doing that. But I think that the upside is worth it. And then automatically keep the final grade updated. If you end up making changes to it, uh, it automatically updates that. So I would encourage you to leave that um, checked. Does that answer your question? Uh, yes, thank you. Okay, perfect. Um, so let's move on. Those are the big three sort of decisions you have to make. Most of the rest of this you'll want to leave default. So uh, the grade scheme is just out of as a percentage. 99.9% uh, .9 of the time you'll leave it there. If you have some strong uh, reason why you don't want to, you can reach out to me or one of the instructional designers and we can talk through that with you. Uh, but because almost everybody leaves this as percentage, we'll just go ahead and, and leave that default and move on. Step five is managing your view display options. So this is, I always have to double check this. This is your view. Uh, so, okay. Two means that when you're looking at the gradebook to see what students have done, you'll see a score that says 89.42. If you move this to like one, you, you'll see 89.4. So it just tells you when you look at the gradebook, uh, how many decimal places you want to see. And this is your view display options, where step six, we'll leave it at two, two is a good default. Um, when you go to step six, you'll see this right here, which is the student view, and it's the number of decimal places to display. Now, the one thing that I would recommend is that those two numbers match. Um, and the reason that I recommend that is you don't want somebody to, you know, I, I had a situation where the students they wanted the students not to see the decimal places because they didn't want to get a bunch of emails that were like, um, how come, you know, I have an I have a 89.6. Can you possibly round it up? And so they wanted them to just see, you know, what the what the percentage was as a whole number without worrying about the percent uh, the sort of decimal places. The problem was it was rounding differently. So what they were seeing was not quite 90 percent because it would be 89.6, uh, but the student would see 90 because it would round up to 90. So what certainly what I want to encourage you to do is to always try to match up what you're seeing when you look at the gradebook versus what students are seeing. And so one way is to do that is to actually make sure that these two numbers, the number of decimal places to display, is the same on step five and step six. The other thing I, I recommend is just mark all of these. Just check all of them. Um, grade scheme color doesn't work. It doesn't do anything unless you set it up uh, and the grade scheme symbol, like you have to go in and do different grade schemes for that. But the easiest thing is just always check them and it'll only show the things that apply. If there's no color set up in your gradebook, then don't worry about it um, because the, it's not like random colors are going to pop up. On the calculated final grade section, you want to check that along with automatically release final grade. So um, yes, so my recommendation is to just leave calculated final grade and then automatically release final grade. Um, and if you end up needing to, um, no, I appreciate you, you pausing there, uh, Kiki. That's my recommendation. If you end up wanting to um, go in and do adjusted final grade for whatever reason later, you can, you can change it, right? You could switch to adjusted final grade at some point during the middle of the term if you need to. But this way, if you don't end up wanting to adjust it, it automatically tracks everything and releases it. And you don't have to worry about going in and typing everyone's grade, which you do with an adjusted final grade. All right. Thank okay. you so much. My pleasure. Um, now, I don't normally say display final grade calculation to users. There is a particular circumstance where you want to, though, and that's if you have a complicated calculation system. The way that might come up is if you recall, I said, if you have a weighted gradebook and you have different items in a category, 
um, the easiest thing you can do is to make every item in that category weighted the same. So you have 10 quizzes, it's 20% of the grade, each quiz is worth 2%. That's a super easy way to, to do a weighted grade book. If you have four papers, one paper is worth 5%, the second paper is worth 10%, the third paper is worth 15%, uh, and you put them all in a category, you can set it up to uh, weight the different items in that category based on their points. And that's a situation where you'd want the points uh, to be different. If you have something set up like that, then you, then you probably want to display final grade calculation to users. So if you have a complicated weighted grade book, this is an option you might want to check. Um, if you don't, then it's best to just leave it off because then you, you could end up getting questions that sort of don't make sense from your students later. Um, and in the event that you have a weighted grade book with a bunch of different like papers, for example, that are going to be weighted differently, I usually recommend you not put them in the same category. You just leave them as standalone items. So paper one would just be a standalone item in the grade book weighted at 5%, right? And paper two would just be a standalone item in the grade book weighted at 10%. And I'll show you that once we actually get to uh, adding items into the gradebook. So that's it. Um, that's a, a number of characters to display. This is rare. You can just leave it at 15. Um, sometimes you can you can type in feedback into the gradebook, but I don't know very many people that do that. So 15 tends to be fine. Go ahead and click continue. And step seven is actually just a summary of everything that we did. So you can see now at the top that we have a weighted gradebook. We're automatically releasing our calculated final grades. Um, and dropping ungraded items, right? So once we've verified that everything is how we want it, we can click Finish. And that's the setup wizard. So that's the bones of uh, how you want your gradebook to function. The next step is going to be to actually create items and categories within your gradebook. Now you could do that right here as soon as you're done by doing create a new grade category or create a new grade item. But I want to show you how to do that if you come back to it later, if you want to end up um, adding something at a, at a later point, because this window really only pops up like right when you finish going through the setup wizard. So let's just leave out of here and go back to grades. Now, if we go to the manage grades instead of setup wizard, we go to manage grades here. Now we can click this new button, which is going to have a drop down and it's going to be item or category. Okay, so if at any other point during the time other than just finishing the setup wizard, you want to add items or uh, categories to your gradebook, you would do it this way. Assessments, go to grades, hit the manage grades tab that opens up, uh, and that's this window that you're looking at. Then the new button, item or category. So the first thing that we're going to do for this gradebook is we're going to add a new category. We're going to call this quizzes. Mm -hmm. And we want the quizzes weight to be, let's make it, uh, I mean, just 10 is fine. It'll be easy to do the math with. Now, um, if you want to allow the category grade to exceed category weight, you can. And that's um, if you have like extra credits within different things. If a student does um, perfect on every um, quiz, for example, and there's extra credits on the quizzes, then they can get more than 10% total. If you don't have this clicked, then even if they earned over 10% because they got all the extra credits, it won't uh, tally to more than 10%. So in the off chance that somebody is perfect on everything um, and you wanna have extra credit, you, you'll have to click that here. The next section, this is really important, which is um, how you want to distribute the percentage that this 10% weight that you're giving to the quiz category across the different items in that category. So usually, especially for quizzes, you want to distribute the weight evenly across all items. So this is the example that I was giving you. If you, um, if you have 10 quizzes and you want all of them to be worth 1% total in this case, um, or you know, one tenth of the weight of, that, of this category, then you would just distribute weight evenly across all items, and that's great. Um, you can also, if you distribute weight evenly across all items, it gives you the ability, and this is only if you distribute the weight evenly across all items, it gives you the ability to automatically drop the highest non-bonus or the lowest non-bonus items uh, within that category. So I've never actually seen somebody drop the highest non-bonus items in the category, uh, unless you're like a judge doing like a figure skating in the Olympics or something, where they drop the highest and the lowest. Uh, for, for a normal class, usually what you might do is allow students to drop their lowest quiz score. 
So, or the lowest two. So let's say you have 12 quizzes and you want them to be able to, you only want to count 10. Well, we'll say we'll drop the lowest two non-bonus items in this category. In this case, the two lowest quizzes in the category won't count. And then the other 10 will make up the 10% distributed evenly across. So that's how that works. But I'll leave it at zero for this demonstration. Uh, and then you have some other options down here, which I think you'll be able to make sense of. Um, and then, so from here now, once we have our category made, all we have to do is do save and close or save and new. I'm gonna do save and new, and we're gonna create one more category. This is gonna be our assignments category. Um, here we're gonna make the assignments 40% uh, of the grade. And what I want to do is to distribute the weights by points across all items in the category. So this is the kind of the situation I was talking about before where you don't want them to weight exactly the same. This is the complicated uh, scenario. Uh, and I wanna show you what that looks like. So we'll save and close. And now we can see that our gradebook has two categories within it. So what I want to do is actually add rows within the categories for the different things that we're going to have. So we'll add an item. We're going to choose numeric, which you'll almost always do. Uh, that your sort of default approach will be numeric. And we're going to make this quiz one. What I want to do now is go and do the category. We're going to put it in the quiz category that we made. And we're going to say maximum. One of the benefits of using a weighted gradebook is you can make each individual item out of 100 points. So we're going to make the quiz out of 100 points so they can see what percentage they got. And then do save and new. We'll do quiz two. I have three quizzes made, so we're going to put three quizzes in. Um, quiz two. Now, what I want you to see is right now, it's asking you what's the weight of this. Uh, but as soon as I put it into the quiz category, it automatically puts it at 50%. And the reason why it puts the weight at 50% is because this would be the second item in the quiz category. And since I, when I set up the quiz category, I said automatically distribute the weight evenly across all items in the category, right now, with two items in that category, each of those will get 50% of that category weight. And so I don't actually have the ability to change this. I can't change it now because it's part of this sort of category setup. So if I hit save and close now, what you'll see is that we've got our quiz category that makes up 10% total. Uh, and then each quiz is out of 100 points and it's weighted as 50% of that category's weight. All right, I hope that makes sense here. Um, when I go in and add a third quiz, what should happen is it should automatically drop to a third of that category's weight. So if I go in and make quiz three, and you'll see right now, again, I can edit this until I put it in a category. Now we're at a third. We'll make that out of 100, and we'll save and close. So now I've got our grade book set up with a quiz category with three separate quizzes in it. I want to add two, I want to add a couple of assignments as well. So we'll do assignment one and assignment two. Assignment one into the assignments category. And that's going to be out of a hundred. So you don't again have the option to do this because what it's going to do is it's going to do, it's going to figure it out out of the points. So actually what I'm going to do for this first one is I'll make this out of 50 points. We'll save and close. And right now, because there's just one assignment in the assignments category, it's 100% of that category's weight. But as soon as I put a second item in that category, assignment two, and I make this out of 100 points, and I add it to the assignments category, when I save and close, what's gonna happen is it's going to distribute the weight by points. So now there's 150 total points in this assignments category. And I made this one 100%. So that's two thirds of that category's weight. So you can see how you can do this. But again, 
what I recommended is if you have this situation, it's best not to put these into a category, but to just leave them as their own sort of standalone items. That's how I would recommend it. But if you did want to have them in the same category, that's how you would use the different point system to create different weights. Okay, hopefully that's clear. Uh, I have a couple of quick things to show you and then we'll get to our final um, item here. The first is, well, if we look at our grade book right now, um, what we have is a bunch of items here, but they're not associated with anything in our class. But what I did before we started this is I actually went in and I made quizzes. So if I look at the quizzes, I've got quiz one, quiz two, and quiz three. So what I want to do now is I want to connect the quizzes that I built into this class to the grade book so that when somebody takes the quiz, it just automatically puts uh, the score over into the grade book. So the way that we're going to do that is by editing these quiz. So if I click this little Chevron, this drop down menu, and I hit the edit button from the pop up menu that appears, um, I can then go to this assessment tab. And from the assessment tab, I can find the um, grade item. So, well, first with quizzes, uh, you want to auto publish the attempt results immediately upon completion. Um, if you want them to see how they did right away. Uh, and you can also, oh, well, it's not associated with the grade book item. So first let's associate it. This is quiz one. We'll go into the quiz category and select quiz one. And now I can automatically update the grade book. So that's this button right here. Now, when the students take the quiz, um, not only will they see immediately what they did, that's this button, um, but they'll also have the grades automatically updated in the grade book. Uh, and it'll go to the right spot that we had uh, wanted it to, which is quiz one. So if I save and close this, you'll see that there's this little ribbon icon that tells you that it's now associated with the gradebook. And if we go back to our gradebook by clicking on assessments and grades, and then I hit manage grades, you'll see now that there's an association for quiz one. So what this is telling you is now this is going to be updated when you grade this item. Can you, can you show us uh, how to get to the the three different quizzes with the key symbol. I didn't totally understand what you said. Can you repeat that? Can you show Can you show me how to get to the place where where we have a three quizzes with the key symbol? Got it. Uh, so where where are the quizzes located? So within the assess, I think that's the question you're asking. So within the assessments, uh, you can click on quizzes, and that's going to take you to um this is just a list of all the quizzes that you had yeah now i built these in advance yeah is that's, that was the, yeah that's what i did but i wasn't, wasn't able to find you know what i can see from your screen but i can see, can see two quiz and then edit categories but i don't see you no know, three pages correct so i made those in advance you could do it really quickly if you just click on new quiz right here oh and then you could make one that says quiz four right <laughs> um and that's how you would do that. I just made these in advance so that I wasn't sitting here creating quizzes during the, the one hour. Um, but you shouldn't see quizzes there in a, if you haven't built those in advance. But that's how you would do it. So you would click on this, you would hit edit, just to walk through it again really quickly. You hit assessments, um, and then you would go to the grade item. This is quiz two, so I'll put it in quiz two. Auto publish the results, synchronize to the grade book. You can allow multiple attempts if you want. Um, and then save and close. Now we've got the ribbon that shows that that's associated with the gradebook. We can double check that by going to our gradebook and seeing now that we have an association in our gradebook here. So, and then you can click on that and it tells you exactly what it is. It's quiz two. Okay, so that's how that works. Uh, you can do the same thing with assignments, etc. That's how you're going to link things right away. I wanted to show with quizzes because I also get the double effect of showing you how to automatically send grades so that you don't have to go in and type it. Um, that only works if you have quiz questions like multiple choice um, uh, where it knows what the right answer is. If you have like short answer thing, quiz questions, um, you won't want to set that up because you need to go in and manually grade things and then export the grades. But for your sort of general multiple choice kind of comprehension check quizzes, uh, you can set it up that way. The last thing that I want to show you 
um, is actually, it's not part of the setup wizard, but I think it can be really helpful if you have a, a expansive gradebook. Uh, so if you go into the settings button when you're in uh, your gradebook, so assessments any, anywhere in the gradebook um, sort of realm, and then if you click on settings, there's a, some additional things that you can see. The first is that, again, um, you've got three tabs. Personal display, this is what you'll see when you're looking at grades. I also like to make sure that everything's checked there. That's perfect. Um, and then org unit display options, this is what um, your students will see. And then calculation options is the last one. So like I said, if you need to switch, if you want to switch to adjusted final grades, you can do it this way without having to go all the way through the setup wizard um, again. But personal display options, this is what I wanted to show you here, which is that you can't have the option to repeat the calculated final grade at the start of the user list if, or adjusted final grade if that's what you're using. So I'll just check them both and then we'll hit save. Now, when you actually go to look at your gradebook, what's going to happen is you're going to see now the final grades at the very beginning. And this doesn't look like a big deal when you only have a couple of items in your gradebook, right? Um, let's see if I can get to the scroll wheel because you can, you know, relatively quickly kind of get over and find where they were before. But normally they're just at the end. But if you have like a bunch of different assignments in the gradebook, as the instructor, it can be really helpful to just see right off the bat at the very beginning of the gradebook without having to scroll to the very end what somebody's grades are. Uh, and it's just like a random hidden uh, feature. Yes, Kiki, I'm glad you like it. It's like it was like such a game changer when I found out you could do this. Um, and I don't know why it's not the the default. It seems like the first thing you want to be able to see. But anyway, I recommend it, it's super helpful if you have a lot of things to see. That way you don't have to scroll all the way to the very end. So I wanted to take a minute to show you that. Now I'm going to stop sharing this, and I want to end um, by pulling up my slides again. I have a, a kind of like a closing activity. So, because we're at the end of time, um, so what I want to do is an exit ticket. Uh, an exit ticket activity allows you to, uh, in the chat, uh, answer one of the following questions. Uh, or both if you want, um, or the complete the following sentence, right? Today I was surprised to learn what, something, you can decide what that something is, or, and or a remaining question that I have is, and you can leave um, something that you still want to know more about gradebook setups. And what's really cool about this exit activity is they're all gonna be in the chat. So I can then review the chat and I can send out, uh, if there's something that I'm like, oh, I definitely should have covered that, let me answer your question. I can respond to either you individually, uh, if it makes most sense to just respond to answer your question that way uh, in an email, or if it makes sense for everybody to know the answers to that, I can just send out a mass email to everybody, say, hey, let me try to answer some of these questions that I got in the chat. So it's a nice way to kind of provide a space for Q&A while respecting the fact that I only asked you to be here for an hour. So take a minute, um, complete one or both of the following sentences, uh, and then we will wrap up here in just a second. Do you want that in the chat, Brian? I'm sorry. I'm trying to look at yeah. the Okay, gotcha. Yeah, perfect. If you just want to put it in the chat, that's great. Uh, and then I'll have access to it where I can sort of review them later. Um, okay. So the recorded session for this, you'll be able to find it in Blaze View 101. Um, there's actually already one, a recorded that I did for this um, in January, but I'm going to replace it probably today, hopefully today with this new version. Um, because each time I do it, I, I hopefully get a little bit better uh, going through the material here. So, um, but right now you could, even right now, this second, you could go into Blaze View 101, um, go into module three, which is where we keep all of our um, webinar recordings uh, from the Center for Excellence in Learning and Teaching. And you go and find the one that has the same title. Uh, but again, I'll be replacing that one with this one uh, as soon as I can get it sort of uh, cleaned up and, and, and uploaded.
I love that, that that one item I threw in right at the last second is the one that's going to, the big takeaway for a few of you. <laughs> it was all great, but I really, really <laughs> love that because I, at the end of the semester, you know, you're scrolling through and nursing, we have so much and the gray book is so long and you have to go back and see which student you're looking at. Somebody was thinking it makes sense. So I'm, I love that. Yeah. It, it almost feels like it should be the default, to be honest. Yes, yes. <laughs> Why would you want to stroll and stro scroll all the way through? Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all so much. Um, I'm going to leave this up for a second so that everybody can get their final exit tickets in. Um, but I really appreciate I, pr I really appreciate you all joining. Uh, if you have any questions as you're sorting. Um, as you're setting up your grade books, uh, feel free to reach out to me or to anybody at our um, Center for E-Learning team. We're all happy to help. We know how important it is to get this set up. But thank you all so much and have a lovely rest of your day. You too. Thanks, Brian. Um, quick question before you dip okay. off. Yeah. So if I change that view, it's only changing my view, correct? Because I don't know if the person I co-teach with, you know, I have to, I'm going to talk with her about it because I wonder if she knows. <laughs> but I think it should be the default for both my classes that I teach in. So um, if you open up the settings, you'll see that it's personal display options. And then the second tab is org unit display options. So okay. I'm pretty sure that it's just you. So um, yeah, it'll just Thank be you. It won't mess with anything else. All right, I appreciate it. Have a great day. My so pleasure. all the courses I missed last week, do I just need to search again for the next time you're gonna offer them? I had surgery last week and I, I've been, I'm, I'm still home. I don't go back until next week to work, but um, there were some that was in person sessions that I wanted to be able to attend. Mm -hmm. Are you guys gonna offer them again? So we offer everything. I think the ones you were looking at were part of the online team. I'm gonna stop recording real quick just so that this isn't uh... Yes, sir. I'm sorry. No, you're no, 